And this is the last week that we're going to take up offering only. You thought I was going to say we're not going to take up offering anymore. <laughs> that we weren't going to collect tithes anymore. No, no. It's the last week that we're only going to do it through the boxes at the exits or online or if you drop it off at the office. Beginning next week, we're going to include a fourth way. We're going to begin to pass the baskets back up and down the aisles, OK? Um, now, hear me say, it's not the placing of an offering in whatever mechanism you use. It's the intent in the heart. God loves a cheerful giver. And literally that word cheerful means hilarious. Okay? And so when, when we bring our... T Listen, why should it be hilarious? It's because you cannot outgive God. Okay? That's the reason it ought to be hilarious. That's the reason the attitude of our... Is, uh, let's just see what God's going to do, okay, in my life and, 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 and in my finances and all these things as I am faithful to do what he's called me to do. And what he calls us to do faithfully is tithes. And then tithes are offerings over and above that. So let's pray and just thank the Lord for that opportunity to laugh, to be hilarious in our giving. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, and Lord, we look forward to the opportunity that we have, Lord, to bring back to you what is already yours. Lord, everything we have comes from you to begin with, and so, so Father, as we bring it back to you, Lord, may we do it with just a, such a joyful, hilarious spirit that, God, we just want to say thank you, God, for everything you've given me, everything, that, everything you've provided. Lord, help us be faithful stewards of what you've given. And so, Lord, as we take, as we collect these offerings, these tithes that have come to your house, may we use them to glorify you, to serve you, to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. So Jerome and I share a birthday. We share the birthday, not the year. Okay? You come on, brother. You come on. Okay. That way I won't, that way I won't pick on you too long. Okay? Uh, but uh, for those of you that ne never met Jerome Bird, Jerome is a friend from, gee whiz. I mean, we're dating ourselves when we start talking about yeah. when we first worked together. Um, we, uh, we met at seminary together, and we had the opportunity to do camp together. And uh, uh, Jerome was our camp pastor in 85? 85. 85. Mm -hmm. And so we got to serve then together. And then he, had, he left, when he graduated from seminary, he went and started a church, Good News Baptist Chapel. Mm -hmm. It's now Good News Baptist Church. And he's still there. Amen. Okay? Amen. I, I'm still there trying to get all the sin I can out of Cincinnati. So that's, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah. And I guarantee you that if you walked up to him and asked him who's going to win tonight's ball game, you'll probably get a who day. <laughs> <laughs> you know he, who he's. But Jerome, it is always a pleasure. You, it's a pleasure for me just to sit and share a meal with you, much less awesome. to hear, much less to hear you share God's word to us. And so we ask you just to open up God's word and share it with us, my friend. Thank you okay. so much. Hey, Amen. Thank you so much. No, no, no. Don't stop. Don't stop. No. <laughs> wow, it's good to be back with you. Wonderful crowd this morning, something less than a thousand. And, um, but it's, it's, it's such a beautiful place to be. And, and when Pastor Ron and I talked several months ago about coming again, it just always gets into my heart and gets into my mind, and I, I just can't wait to come. And I'm thankful to God for yet this another opportunity to be here and to share with you. This is a, a very special church. I hope you realize. I think you do. Very special church, and uh, I'm just so happy that I have these occasions to come and share with you and fellowship with you and rejoice with you. Now, I want you to know, I don't mind if you say amen, all right? All right? And if you don't want to say amen, maybe you, you might say, praise the Lord. Then I'll even, I'll even take my, my, my. (laughs) 
What a thrilling study you've been in, a sermon series in this amazing book of Daniel. Wow, what an amazing book, what an amazing servant of God. And uh, when Pastor Ron called me and asked me to look into the fifth chapter, I said, okay, brother, we'll do that, we'll do that. I'm, I'm excited to do that. That meant he had already covered the previous chapters and especially the fiery furnace. But I bet he didn't tell you that one of those guys in that furnace was black. <laughs> See, he didn't know. He didn't know. And I, 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 I'll give it to him. He didn't know. Yes, it's in their name. Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. <laughs> It's there. It, oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> you all who are probably on Facebook and YouTube are thinking, who is this guy? Uh, well, let's stand together as we turn our attention to the Word of God. Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. Give me some more. Woohoo. There we go. I even take a who day. Okay, okay. <laughs> Get on with the sermon, preacher. Okay, here we go. Daniel chapter 5. We'll call your attention beginning at verse 5. Daniel 5, beginning at verse 5. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loose and his knees smote against one another. And now if you'll go down to verse 22. Verse 22. And thou, his son, Belshazzar, has not humbled your heart, though you knew all this, but have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of the house before you, and you and your Lord, your wives, your concubines, have drunk wine in them, and has praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand your breath is, and whose are all your ways, hast thou not glorified." Using these verses in this passage, we're going to share a message with you that we've titled, When God Broke Up the Party, subtitled, Your Time is Up. Father, thank you, bless you, praise you for another glorious opportunity to be in this holy place. May you increase May I decrease. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Belshazzar the king has thrown this very elaborate party. Little did he know it would be the last one that he would throw. God broke up the party to tell the king this simple and yet profound message. Your time is up. He was about, the king was about to have the most terrifying experience of his life. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31, the Bible says, it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. 
And make no mistake about it, the judgment of God is for real. That's why the Bible says God is not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But, but, but preacher, wait a minute. Uh, uh, I've always seen God as, as a God of love. Yes, absolutely. God is a God of love, but you can't stop there. You can't stop there. He is a God of love, but he is also a God of justice and judgment. Micah 6.8 says, He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So he is a God of love, but he is also a God of justice and judgment. You see, on the cross, on the cross, Jesus endured the wrath and judgment of God for us. The treasure of heaven crucified for us. Paul said, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Wow. He became sin for us, though he never committed one sin. And, and he said on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, folks, he was forsaken by God, so we would not be forsaken by God. Amen. Wow. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God he is. Belshazzar has set himself up for the judgment of God. He decided in his party that he would openly and defiantly mock God. And you know something? The entertainment industry is doing the same thing today. Openly, defiantly mocking God. TV shows that promote the homosexual lifestyle. Tyler Crossdress and Perry and other celebrities who openly and defiantly mock God, all of this gender silliness, that's what I call it, all of this gender silliness. It, listen, it's a mockery of God. The Bible clearly teaches us and shows us that God created man and woman Woman for man, man for woman. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But our society, it's just messed up. We really got it all messed up. Why do we have it all messed up, Pastor? Because we've gotten away from God. We've gotten away from the Word of God. And when you get away from God, you get away from the Word of God, it's only going to be chaos. It's only going to be chaos. The book of Judges, I think, really describes our day and time pretty good. In fact, the last chapter of Judges and the last verse in that chapter says, In those days, every man did what was right in his own eyes. And that's what people are doing today. There is a school now up in Ohio that recently opened its door to a Satan's club. That's what they call it. Satan's club. And, and the school opened up. Look how far we've gone. 
Look how much God is being mocked in our day. In order to mock the God of Israel, the king brought in these certain vessels that had been taken out of God's house. The priest used to use those vessels in worship in Jerusalem. And, and, and they would do various worship activities using these very selected special vessels that were set apart for that specific purpose. Well, Belshazzar had these vessels brought into the party so they could drink their wine and soak themselves in the orgy of a party that they were having. And you know what God did? God said, okay, that is enough. It's time to break up this party. And from out of nowhere, while they was just partying, having themselves a good old time, from out of nowhere, there appeared on a wall a hand that started writing. And there you go. There was a hand that started writing on the wall. And when the king saw the hand, he sort of looked at what he was drinking for a minute. <laughs> then he rubbed his eyes and he looked at the, the wall again and the hand had, had just finished doing the writing there on the wall. And verse 6 says, and the king's countenance was changed. Look, folks, that old boy turned pale in a hurry. <laughs> That's what they're talking about there. And the king's countenance was changed. That old boy turned pale real quick. He saw that writing there on the wall. He, he, he was so terrified that his knees started literally knocking each other. His hips got out of joint, and, and over in the corner, Jerry Lee Lewis was saying, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. <laughs> Man, this thing was amazing. This thing was incredible. And the king literally fell down because he lost the use of his knees and his hips. I believe he just literally collapsed in terrifying fear for what he was seeing. And when they started putting that writing up there, my knees started shaking just a little bit there. I saw that handwriting coming up there on the wall there. Notice with me now verses 25 through 28. Verses 25 through 28. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, Mene, Tekel, you farson. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, this is Daniel talking now. God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you are weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. And so God, through the handwriting on the wall, through his servant Daniel, God basically said to the king, your time is up. That's an interesting message, isn't it? Because we all know that one day that's going to be said about us. Our time is going to be up. We don't know when, don't know where, don't know how. I'll never forget several years ago, I was, I was at home watching the Cincinnati Reds opening day game. And I'm just sitting there. I got my hot dogs in front of me. Got my peanuts. And, and, and I'm watching the game on TV. 
The game starts. The pitcher throws to the batter. Throws to the batter again. After about five pitches, the home plate umpire stands up from behind the catcher and he motions out to the second base umpire and says this. And the umpire, home plate umpire, turns around and collapses and drops dead. Just like that. It was almost as if God was saying to that umpire, you're out. Your time is up. Your time is up. What the king failed to recognize is what many people today fail to recognize, and that is simply this. We are not in control. Right? If this pandemic has taught us anything or should teach us something, we are not in control. God is the one who calls the shots. This thing didn't take God by surprise. He knew a long time ago this was coming. And he allowed it to come. And for some, hopefully, it's gotten our attention. It's caused us to kind of rethink some things. We've had to do life a little bit differently. And, and maybe, just maybe, not take God so much for granted and not take life so much for granted. Because at the end of the day, none of us are in control. We're just not. We like to think we are, and so did Belshazzar. He, he, he thought he had it going on. But God showed him, oh no, little man. You, you, I allowed you to be in the position you're in. He totally forgot who was in control. Daniel told the king, Daniel said, <laughs> the God in whose hand your breath is, you have not glorified. My goodness. Just think about it. Every breath you and I take is a blessing from God. It is. Every beat of our heart is a blessing from God. And I recently had a pacemaker put in. And I've discovered, Pastor, that that pacemaker is really a spiritual thing. Because Jesus said, blessed are the pacemakers. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. I got I got to get my scriptures right there. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> Is God being glorified in your life? That's the question. Is God being glorified in your life? Or is he first in your life? Is he first and foremost in your life? Or has he been relegated to the back seat or maybe kicked out altogether? Or do you just call on God in times of trouble? The Aramaic word there, mene, means numbered. And that's what God wanted that king to recognize, that his days and his time was numbered. In fact, Psalm 90, verse 12, we find these words. The psalmist said, so teach us 
to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We, we really ought to number our days because our days are numbered. Amen. They really are. When I was in high school a long time ago, <laughs> I used to think in my teens, I used to think that 40 was old. <laughs> well, when I got to 40, I thought, 40 ain't old. 40 is good. Now, I thought when I was 40, now when I get to 60, I'm going to be old. I got to 60. And I started thinking, you know what? 60 really ain't all that old. I'm 64. If the Lord lets me live to be 80, I'll be old. <laughs> I, I, I just hope he'll let me live to be that age. Because remember, remember, Moses was 80 when God called him at that bush. He was 80 years old. Can you imagine that? God said, okay, Mo, here we go. <laughs> I mean, he's up there on that mountain, got a little walker with him. <laughs> and God used him. And God wants to use you. Regardless of your age regardless of where you are in life right now. God is not through with you. And it very well could be that God is about to do his greatest work in you. That's what he did with Moses, didn't he? You, have that, you ever have that feeling? I, probably some of you might every now and then. It, it hits me every now and then. You, you ever have that feeling called giving up? It's like a dark cloud that just kind of hangs around. Well, listen, instead of giving up, start looking up. Start looking up and just realize that the God that we serve is a mighty God. And he has... He has great and mighty things in store for us. That's what Jeremiah said. Call, God said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Oh my goodness. Thank you, God, for using us and choosing us to be in your service. When you talk about your days being numbered, if you live to be 70, you will have lived 25,550 days or 613,200 hours or 36,792,000 minutes. I don't like them getting down to minutes. But you see, our days are number. And at any moment, God could say, your time is up. So, not only are we not in control, you don't have the time you think you have. Amen. You really don't. Belshazzar thought he had time to just do whatever he wanted to do. Mock God any way he wanted to mock God. Live any way he wanted to live. That, 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 that's what he thought. It never really occurred to him that you, 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 don't, you don't have the time you think you have. And so, I, I, I encourage us, 
Love each other. Serve, each, serve one another. Be diligent about your service to God. Do all you can while you can. Give all you can give and then give a little more. Because, folks, we really don't have the time that we think we have. And there are those who say, well, uh, uh, someday, preacher, someday I'm going to give my life to God. Oh, really? When is someday going to come? Well, soon as I, oh, no, you messed up. No. You'll never get right with God if it's depending on you. Look at what he has already done for you. Put your trust in what God has already provided for you in the Lord Jesus Christ and his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. Put your trust in those things and then you got something. You got something. God desires that we all come to him in repentance and faith. And, and even when we come to him, it is he who draws us to him. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is what? The gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. My, my, my salvation was all God, it was all his precious Holy Spirit pricking my heart and drawing me to him. The only thing I had to do was to humble myself. And you know what? He helped me do that too. But I had to be willing to humble myself and to say, God, <laughs> I need you. And I'm putting my trust, I'm putting my faith in you. I thank you for the glorious sacrifice that you've provided for my salvation. And I bow down before you, and I humble myself before you to receive your most precious, glorious gift. Belshazzar refused to humble himself. And so Daniel told him the interpretation of the dream. And when he told him about his days being numbered, and how his kingdom ultimately was coming to an end. The Bible says that same night, Belshazzar was slain. So much for a happy ending to his party. <laughs> he met his maker and it wasn't on good terms. There's a story about four demons who were going to come to earth to deceive people. Pastor Ron may have told you this story, but I want to hear it again, so I'm going to tell it. <laughs> the first demon came to Satan, and Satan said to the demon, what will you do to deceive men on earth? And that demon said, I will tell men there is no God. And Satan said, oh, no, you're not going to deceive too many people. People know there's a God. So the next demon comes in and Satan said, what will you do to deceive men on earth? And that demon said, I will tell people there's no hell. 
And Satan said, well, you're not going to deceive too many either. People deep inside, they know there's a hell. The third demon comes in and Satan says, what will you do to deceive men on earth? And that demon said, I will tell people there's no heaven. Satan said, oh, no, not good. People know there's a heaven. The fourth and final demon came in. Satan said, and what will you do to deceive men on earth? And that demon said, I will tell people there's no hurry. And Satan said, go. You'll deceive them by the thousands. Is that what you're thinking? There's no hurry? You're wrong, my friend. Honestly, you really don't have a moment to lose. The judgment of God is just a heartbeat away. That's it. So if I were you, I'd be, I'd be in a hurry. And I'd run to him. And I'd say, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. And I can't come to you on my terms. I got to come to you on yours. And I realize that. God broke up Belshazzar's party. And every now and then, he has to break up our pity parties. People get upset in church and stop coming. And they use all kinds of excuses why they won't come or shouldn't come. So they sit around, have their own little pity party. Uh, Listen, be careful. While you're having your pity party, God just might come along and break it up. And you're not going to like how he breaks it up. Well, I'm not going back to that church again. They looked at me funny. (laughs) You might be funny looking. (laughs) No, come on. Let's recognize the love that God has for us. And that glorious, beautiful place that Jesus has prepared for us. And that if we're willing to humble ourselves, we will be with him forever and ever. World without end. I wouldn't miss it, would you? There's nothing on earth worth missing heaven over. Nothing. And I don't like when I hear these preachers. How much? Oh gosh, I'm running out of time. I don't like when I hear these preachers who, who tell people from time to time, oh, you just come to Jesus and all of your troubles will go away. You're, there's blessing, blessing, blessing. You just sow your seed and God will multiply your seed and all of that stuff. You just make Jesus your choice and drive a Rolls Royce. <laughs> you make Jesus your choice, you might have to give up that Rolls Royce. Amen? Amen. My, my, my. God is an amazing God. And he has an amazing plan for your life. And I'm here today just to let you know that if you'll come to him and put your trust in him, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. Let's pray together. 
Father, thank you so much that we have your word and we have in your word so many lives that you touched and you continue to touch even to this day. Help us to humble ourselves so that you might be able to give us all that you desire to give us. And those that need to turn their lives over to you for salvation, God, that they would realize that is the ultimate gift from you, to put their trust in Jesus and receive life everlasting. Thank you again for this time that you've allowed us together. We honor you. We praise you. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we stand? Let's sing together.
Please be seated. So if you're going to Crossroads, where are you? Come on. If you're going to Crossroads this morning, come on. And um, this is a team. There's some that have already left heading out to Crossroads. Gordon, when you get here, I want you to explain what's going on. And I want you to explain this thing sitting here on the front row, too. Okay? I'll get it. You explain. Thanks to Brian for the idea, but this is a saran wrap football. And uh, inside of this, uh, with many, many uh, lengths of saran wrap, are uh, goodies and gift cards, uh, uh, candy and so forth, that uh, the boys out at Crossroads are going to unwrap today. Each one is going to have a 15 second turn and it'll go around the room until that ball gets all the way down to the middle. And on the way down, they'll find all those, uh, all those goodies. Anything that falls out during your turn of unwrapping, you get to keep. <laughs> Uh, what? No, 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 no. You, you have to unwrap. There's no digging down when you see something. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> so uh, this, is, uh, this is something that we thought would be a, uh, an attention getter and hopefully something that will break the ice and allow us to uh, come into relationship uh, with these boys. So uh, Super Bowl Sunday, that's the deal. So uh, you guys stand up. So in case someone doesn't know about what you're doing on this second Sunday of every month, why don't you tell everybody that they can come join if they'd like. Okay. We, we would love to have you come and join us. Uh, second Sunday of every, every month at the end of this service, we meet out here in the, in the uh, fellowship hall and we uh, uh, decide how we're going to carpool. It's about a 50 minute drive out to the uh, Boys Academy out beyond uh, Punta Gorda. And we have uh, 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 the dinner with them, lunch with them, and then it's a time of sharing and interacting with those boys. I tell you, uh, they've been through a lot. They're very scarred. They've had some, some tough times, and it's hard to break through this shell of protection that they have for themselves. And so for us, that's what we want to try to do today and, and every second Sunday of the month is to go out there and, and come alongside of them. We don't want to judge them, but we want to encourage them and we want to point them to Jesus Christ. You're all welcome to come. So that's the second Sunday of every month. Just let Gordon know that you want to be a part of that team. Here's your football, by the way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go right, and you know we're going to do that sweep. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you guys come. These are the, these are the team members that are already going. There's some that have already left to fix the food uh, for them to go. You're uh, you're you're invited to come and join them, going the second Sunday of every month. But we want to pray for them. Will you commit to pray for them today? Pray, but pray specifically for the boys' hearts. You know, I, I was thinking as you were talking about that they've got scars. You know, at the end of chapter four there in Daniel, it says Nebuchadnezzar says, and God is able to humble the proud. But not only does he humble the proud, but God touches. You think about through the New Testament, how many people were hurting and God simply came and met them where their need was and touched them and changed their lives. And so that's what we need to pray for these boys, that, that God would touch them in their point of need, that they would recognize that he is the only solution, the only answer, the only, the only one to turn to. And so will you, will you just commit this afternoon to pray for this team as they go and interact with these boys? And like we've said, if you want to join them next, next month, second Sunday, Come be a part, okay? So let's, if you will, let's pray for them as we send them off, and then we'll thank Jerome for being here in just a minute. Father, we do. We come before you. And Lord, you are the God who you divested yourself, and you came and took on flesh according to what, second, according to what Philippians 2 tells us. You, you were equal, you're equal with God. You are God, and you, you came and you took on flesh. You humbled yourself to be with us, to walk with us, to, to deal with the things that we deal with, to be tempted like we're tempted, but yet without sin. And then you humbled yourself even to the death on the cross. 
And so, Father, we know how great your love is, and yet, Lord, we also know how great our need is. And so we're so glad, Lord, we're so thankful that your love exceeds our need. And so, Father, for these boys, uh, Lord, that are, that are scarred, that have had so many experiences, that are, that are struggling, God, we simply know that your love can reach beyond whatever's happened in their life to touch their heart. And Father, just today, we simply pray for those boys that will interact with, with our people that are going, that Lord, you will use them to touch them. And Lord, to help them see who you are, how much you love, how, how great a sacrifice you gave. And Lord, some of that is just by us just hanging out with them. It doesn't have to be a verbal thing. It's just they need to know somebody cares. And so, Father, we pray for these boys that their hearts will be softened today and that the Holy Spirit will interact with them and bring them to a point that they know they need you. And so, Father, we thank you for these that are going. Pray, Lord, their protection there and back. Lord, for their interactions. Lord, that you will give them wisdom in, in who to interact with and how to interact and the conversations to have. Thank you for those that have went ahead to prepare the meal, that it's going to be ready when they get there and be able to eat with the boys and spend time with them. Father, we thank you for other churches that are coming alongside uh, uh, Crossroads Hope Academy and doing the exact same kinds of things we are, just going and building relationships, showing Jesus to them. And so, Father, we just simply ask, God, will you bring about a harvest in the hearts of these boys? Lord, that you'll bring them. Bring them home to you. Uh, Father, we don't care through what mechanism, through what, what ministry, what church. We just, Father, our desire is that they would come to know you as their Savior. Father, thank you. And Lord, as we leave here, help us to remember, God, that you're in the business of humbling the proud. We saw that last week. We see that this week. So God, again, help us. Help us when we think it's about us. Because, God, we were not created to be about us. We were created to be about you. Help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay? Jerome, I, I, if you hear me call him Rome, that's what I've called him for all these years. I, thank you for being with us, my friend. Okay? Uh, I, am, I am thankful for all the years that God has given us together. Okay, it's been it's been a blessing, and and all the sermons that I've heard you preach, okay, um, God has always spoken. Amen. Okay, God has always has. Amen. So, uh, as you as you get ready to leave this this morning, know that if you've got a need, there are people out here at our connection area that would love to t pray with you, talk with you. If you've got something you need to talk about, something that's going on. Um, if not, and you've not already been to life group, or you're not going tomorrow night, there's life groups going on. In about 20 minutes, you need to go find one, okay? You need to go find one because that's where you're going to make connections with people. So that being said, you have a wonderful day in your life group if you haven't been already, okay? Take care.
Thank you. 